Here I have a cup filled with water. See, water does come out. I'm going to whirl it around in a vertical circle. imagine that if I whirl it too slowly, water would spill out of the cup. This means that the speed of the cup at the top of the circle has to be more than a certain amount. If the radius of the circle is 0.9 meters, what is the minimum speed the cup has to have at the top without spilling water? So let's follow the problem solving procedures. The cup is doing circular motion, so the acceleration goes towards the center, and the center is down here, so the acceleration goes downward. And let's draw the force diagram. Now we can choose to draw the force diagram for the water, or we can choose to draw the force diagram for the cup. Let's see, if we draw the force diagram for the water, we would have of course, the non-contact force mg. What is the water touching? The water is touching the cup, so you have a contact surface, and that's the normal force. Now the cup pushes on the water, so the normal force goes downward. And if you draw the force diagram for the cup, that would also be non-contact force, mg, and the cup will be touching the string. The string gives uh, tension downward. So either one will give you the same result. See, it's the same force diagram. It's just uh, for the water, it's called normal force. For the cup, this force is called tension. Now, we're done with the force diagram. Let's write the net force equals to ma. Let's see. If the cup is being whirled around at the minimum speed at that point, that means uh, the water is almost going to spill. Water is almost going to lose contact with the cup. If the water is almost going to lose contact, that means it is almost going to lose the contact force. So if water is almost going to fall out of the cup, barely touching the cup, that means the normal force is zero. In the cup's case, is it the, the cup is almost going to fall. The string is slack. It's still straight, but it's almost going to fall. That means the tension in the string would be zero. So either way, the net force will be mg, and that equals to ma, since it's a circular motion, the acceleration is the centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. The mass would cancel, so I didn't need to give you the mass of the water or the mass of the cup. So g equals to v squared, that's the minimum speed, divided by the radius, 0.9. So we'll get that minimum speed to be 3 meters per second. If the whirling speed is more than 3 meters per second at the top, V is bigger, that means we will need more force to provide centripetal force. Mg is not going to change. That means the normal force and tension can no longer be zero. Let's see. If uh, it goes faster than that minimum speed. Then the normal force for the water is not going to be zero. And when we write the net force equals to ma, it's just going to be mg and normal force, the same direction, they work together, so we add them. And that equals to ma, still doing circular motion, so v squared over r. So in that case, 
if we know the speed, we can plug in the speed and be able to find the normal force. The faster the speed, the more the normal force between the water and the cup, which means that the more the water and the cup press against each other. In other words, the faster the speed, the more the centripetal acceleration v squared over r, and the harder the water leans outward into the cup, which means the higher the normal force. For the cup, similarly, the faster the speed, the larger the acceleration, the more the cup leans outward, which means the harder it pulls on the string, the higher the tension. If the whirling speed is less than 3 meters per second, mg would be more than the centripetal force required to keep it in circular motion. So water would spill and the cup would fall. See? There is water in the cup. I will whirl this first at the speed faster than 3 meters per second. Then I will slow it down. Problems similar to this one include the roller coaster problems. Here you have a roller coaster car on a vertical circular track. I can give you the radius and the ask you to find the minimum speed of the car to make the loop. Or I can give you the radius, the speed of the car at the top, and the mass of the car, and ask you to find the normal force on the car at the top of the loop. Either way, if you follow the problem-solving procedures, at the top, its acceleration would go down, and if you draw the force diagram, you would have mg going down and the coaster will be touching the track so you have a contact surface and that gives you normal force. The normal force pushes down on the roller coaster. So they are just like the water cup problems. If the roller coaster is barely making the loop, that means the coaster car is barely touching the track. It's not pressing against the track anymore. The normal force is zero. So the force equation will be mg equals to ma. If the coaster is moving at a speed that's faster than the minimum speed at the top, the normal force is not zero, then you just have mg plus normal force is your net force equals to ma, and you plug in what's given, the rvm, then you'll be able to find the normal force.